Hello, everyone. Welcome to Van and Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. This is episode 40, season two. I'm your host, Pete Costanis, and we have a very interesting show coming up. Uh, but right now, we'll go into a commercial break, and this program is brought to you by Good and Plenty Candy. And here is an old commercial featuring Choo Choo Charlie. Take it away, Charlie. <laughs> Once upon a time there was an engineer Choo-choo Charlie was his name we hear He had an engine and he sure had fun He used good and plenty candy to make his train run Charlie says, love my good and plenty Charlie says, really rings the bell Charlie says, love my good and plenty Don't know any other candy that I love so well Okay, everyone, I am back. I'm glad you enjoyed uh, that commercial. Um, that Good and Plenty candy is still around. Um, I haven't had it in a long time, but I used to love it as a kid. Uh, the candy was uh, coated uh, over uh, black licorice, and it came in two colors, uh, pink and white. And uh, I do remember Choo Choo Charlie, the commercials. Uh they were, they were fun to watch. And uh, they also had Good and Fruity. And then that was like, uh, that was a good candy too. But I prefer, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Good and Plenty. And, uh, you know, a lot of people don't like black licorice, but I do. But uh, I also like Twizzlers. I still eat them once in a while. So that, that was fun to listen to. Anyway, uh, Thank you for joining me. We have an interesting show coming up on my podcast, and uh, we will talk about two things. First, we'll talk about shock theater. And uh, the second thing I will talk about is Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor and Restaurant. So that should be fun. And for, now we'll start off with shock theater. Now, shock theater, a lot of people don't remember that, but uh, it was very memorable to us older people. Uh, not older than me, that is. Uh, the show came out in the late 50s and only ran for two years. So I'll give you a brief history of that. And it's very, and it's very interesting. So here we go. Uh, Shock Theater was a program that showed... Uh, classic horror films from Universal Studios and it was in, and it was for television syndication and uh so uh it was ju not just marketed in Chicago it was just marketed in other cities as well so like for example New York Philadelphia um probably Detroit I assume and uh this was uh, the predecessor of creature features which aired on WGN TV Channel 9 starting in, on September 19th, 1970. Uh, and even for Screaming Yellow Theater that starred uh, Jerry G. Bishop as Svengoolie, the original Svengoolie. And there were others, uh, programs like that in Chicago that played uh, horror movies, uh, some from Universal Studios, other from the Hammer Studios in England, and other independent uh, studios. So uh, I will talk about Creature Features and Screaming Yellow Theater in more detail in future episodes, uh, preferably Halloween. That, that would be a lot of fun. So uh, just look forward to that. And uh, so on, uh, so I'll give you the, um, the history of that on when it started in Chicago. Okay. And uh, let's see. So uh, that's that went on the uh, shock. Excuse me. Shock theater went on the air on December 7th, 1957. And it premiered at 10 o'clock in the evening on WBKB Channel 7. Now, I've mentioned this before. That was that's WLS, which is now uh, they changed the call letters from WBKB to WLS on October 1968. And, you know, it's uh, I've mentioned this many times before, so maybe I'll do a episode of call letters of uh, t television shows, like, for example, from Channel 2, 
and Channel 7, and uh, Channel 5, which was uh, not WMAQ, it was WNBQ. So that would be interesting. That would be an interesting topic to discuss in a later episode. Anyway, uh, the show, uh, like I said, it uh, premiered in December 7, 1957, and the host was a, a guy named Marvin. And sometimes he was called either Mad Marvin or Marvin the Nearsighted Mad Ben. <laughs> and uh, he, his character was a demented beatnik who wore thick glasses like Coke bottles. And he wore a black turtle neck sweater. And uh, he didn't look scary. He looked uh, sort of bizarre. You know, he was, uh, but he did frightening things as, uh, you know, as I continue to speak about that. And uh, the the so he was the first television horror host in Chicago, right before uh, Svenguli and uh, the current Svenguli, played by Rich Cos. So uh, so he so Marvin was uh, he was the first, and he was played by a man named Terry Bennett, a very talented man from Brooklyn, New York, and. Uh, when it would premiered, um, it didn't take off right away, so it took a while, you know, to you know, to for the character to ca- to catch on. Also, the program that is, and uh, it also featured his wife. <coughs> Excuse me, and it, her name was Deer. Her name was Deer, and uh, she was played by Terry Bennett's real wi- real life wife, Joy Bennett. And uh, you never saw her face. <coughs> Excuse me. Never saw her face. And she was. Uh, uh, so you only saw her from the back. And. Uh, and you, you and that was only revealed at the last episode. I'll get into that in, in a few minutes. Anyway, the, the program showed. Uh, horror movies from Universal. The first movie that premiered was the 1931 movie Frankenstein. And uh, Marvin appeared in the commercial breaks. And uh, the inter- I read somewhere in a book, I will talk about the book in, in a second, that uh, when Marvin finished uh, introducing the film, they didn't show the opening credits, which is bizarre. I don't know why they did that. I don't know why the station did allow that. They just went to the beginning of the film, which is strange. Oh, boy, that was very strange. Anyway, <clears throat> excuse me for coughing. <laughs> so uh, they showed, uh, then later movies came on. It was uh, The Wolfman, dr- uh, 1931, uh, The Wolfman, uh, pre- uh, the 1941 movie, The Wolfman, 1931 movie, Dracula, their sequels, and uh, they were often repeated. So uh, when when it went on commercial break, Marvin would... Uh, say some comments, perform some acts, and uh, he would uh, constantly perform experiment, experiments on, or amputations on deer. Oh, that poor girl. And she would always be back to normal by the next commercial be- break, which is bizarre. <laughs> back then, a lot of people got frightened by that. And uh, so uh, he also had support uh, supporting cast. And other characters were on the show where there was a guy named Orville. He, he was a hunchback like Igor and Shorty. He was a giant wearing a rubber Frankenstein mask. And there was also a band called the Deadbeats, and who were the members of the Art Van Dam Quintet. And they wore white makeup and with black circles around their eyes. So, uh, but then the, the program expanded uh, an extra hour. And uh, so there was a new half hour segment after the movie and it was called the shock tale party. And those guys appeared in that. And uh, so that was, that was an interesting, story. I, this came, this premiere right before I was born. And then when I was, when I grew up, I heard about this show as time went on and, you know, and I didn't give a second thought about it. So as I got older, then I became very intrigued about this. Very intrigued indeed. 
So uh, right now I will play a clip, which I found on YouTube. It's the beginning of the show. And this lasts about uh, about a minute and 40 seconds. And the the clip is credited by a man named Terry Tiz, T-I-Z. And I want to thank him for that. And then so I will play the clip right now. And you can listen to the introduction of Shock Theater starring Marvin. Here we go. You've been a flat tire at every party we went to. Oh. That's right, you old windbag. Let's see if this really works now. Just hold this up to your mouth. Uh -huh. Here's how the whole thing works. Remember people saying you were full of hot air? Uh -huh. What's this? I'm going to do something that, that really I've been trying to do for a long time. See, I take the pencil, I make the line there with a ruler. Uh -huh. like what am I doing? We're going to print the newspaper, the shock absorber. See? Yeah, yeah. now here's how it works. You take the little letters from the tinker toy set there. See? Yeah. Here. O, O, M, M, you know spelling out, you give up, commercial, C-O-M-M-E, R, oh, it's a deadbeat, deadbeat's there, hey, I put the glasses on, I knew you were coming, oh, I did, that's pretty funny, huh, oh, Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed that up uh, that uh, introduction to Shock Theater. Uh, the host, Terry Bennett, he, he had a very interesting uh, career. Uh, so uh, he was born in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, he was born in, um, I forgot the date, in 1930. So he... Uh, he, did, he was a ventriloquist in a very interesting uh, career. And uh, so, he, yeah, here, here's the date. I'm sorry. He was born April 25th, 1930. And uh, he, he started ventriloquism at the age of 10. And he entered talent shows. And uh, he appeared on television shows in the early 50s, the Arthur, Arthur Godfrey, Godfrey Show, excuse me, and the Kate Smith Hour. And then he was, uh, he traveled, he did touring, he traveled all around the country, and then he uh, met his wife, Joy Bennett, in Tampa, Florida. And then uh, after he uh, went into the service, the military service, he, when he returned, he, they got married on 1950, in 1953. And he had a, the, the dummy, the ventriloquist dummy, his name was Red Flannels. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't actually his, uh, someone gave it to him. And, uh, then he came to Chicago in 1954 and then he joined the staff at WBKB channel seven. And he was a writer, producer, uh, on air promotion director. He did, he was Jack of all trades. And I, I think he did, uh, he was in advertising and I think he did ads, uh, uh, for Polk brothers, appliance store. And uh, so uh, that, and then uh, someone approached him from the television station, and he they asked him, "Do you want to host the horror show, Shock Theater?" And he said, "Yeah, I'll do it." And then, uh, so when he get, I don't know where he get the idea, you know, where he got the glasses and the beat. Like, you know, during that time in the late fifties and early sixties, the beatnik. It was the beatnik mood, you know, and that was uh, like you would write poetry, go to coffee houses and smell incense, stuff like that. <laughs> Very interesting. And then, uh, so he, 
he was a very popular guy, and there were and people found out where he lived in Chicago. He lived in Schiller Park, and they would call uh, they would call his house uh, day and night. And but he didn't mind, you know. Uh, he didn't get uh, you know he didn't freak out or yelled at him, so that was good. And then uh, he had his own fan club called the Marvin Fan Club. And uh, there are clips of him on YouTube that he visited Wrigley Field with his wife and also at Lincoln Park Zoo. And uh, I read somewhere that uh, he was traveling around State Street by the studios in a hearse. You know, that was been interesting. I wish there was a clip of that. Uh, and then uh, when the, sh the show went off the air, uh, in, uh, 19, I think October, 1959, and then it was replaced. So, uh, a lot of people petitioned to bring it back. Didn't, didn't work. And it says, I heard Terry Bennett didn't want to continue and, uh, he wanted to do something else. So I'll talk about his career in a future episode. I'll go into more detail, you know, and then, um, Unfortunately, he died in a young age, and uh, he was uh, 47 years old. He died on October 12, 1977. He lived in Tampa, and uh, Florida, that is. And uh, and his wife, uh, Joy, uh, I think she died around 2005. So, uh, you know, this, and she... Uh, she uh, reminisced in a couple interviews about the show, her husband and his talents. And then um, also I want to mention that there are two books about shock theater, which you find that you would find very interesting. Uh, one book is uh, called, uh, it goes into more detail of the show and it's called shock theater, Chicago style. It's on paperback. Uh, you can find it on uh, Amazon or eBay. Um, I found the book, I read the book, but I got it out of the library. And I think I, I'm trying to remember which library. I oh, I went into Hodgkins, Illinois, not too far from my house because it was hard to find. And uh, I might buy it someday, you know, to keep. And then I read it. It was fascinating, fascinating book, you know, that, uh, it go, how the show got started, how, uh, Terry Bennett, you know, how he created a Marvin character and all that. And, uh, it was, it was a, it's a really fascinating book. Very, very well detailed, uh, well informed. Uh, the author's name is Donald F. Glut. So if you uh, do a Google search, you will find it. Uh, you, you won't be disappointed. It's a very good book. And the other book I want to mention is, uh, called, from Shock Theater to Svengoolie, Chicago TV horror movie shows. And that was uh, published, I mean, written by uh, two men, Ted Akuda and Mark uh, Yurkiu. I don't know if I pronounced his name. Uh, his name is spelled Y-U-R-K-I-W. And I have that book at home. I bought it myself a long time ago, and I love it. And also just not features uh, Shock Theater, features uh, Svengoolie. Creature features. Uh, there was uh, other horror uh, sh uh, TV shows that showed the horror movies. There was uh, Thrillorama from Channel Five. Uh, there was also uh, I can't think of a freaky film, a freaky film of the week that was on Channel Seven that came in the late sixties. And there was also uh, Monster Rally that showed on WS WSNS Channel Forty Four. Or others, so you can pick up that book. It's on. You can do a Google search as well on that book. It's on Amazon. I, I love the book. It's it's great and really great. Okay, that'll be enough for um, uh, for Shock Theater. Now the next thing I will talk about is uh, Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor, and I posted a photo on my page, on my Facebook page, Van Chicagoland, and all my social media accounts. And it was a newsletter from Fort City Shopping Center. And it and it showed that uh, it was uh, the newsletter said that it that uh, 
Farrell's was coming to Fort City, and it would be opened on April. I forget the exact day, but it's April, late April, nineteen seventy-seven. So, um, I I'll go into more detail about my memories of that place. But right now, here is a commercial of Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor. It's not from Chicago, and it's from the early. 1980s. So here we go. When Deanne had her eighth birthday party at Farrell's, <laughs> even the Beasley brothers had fun. <laughs> when Jake the Snake had his birthday at Farrell's, Hi, the whole group wanted to come. In fact, there's only one place so crazy, so totally wacko, that everybody has a party. Farrell's. Because whether you're six or 14 or right in between, you always have a party at Farrell's. Okay, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial. Um, I'll give you a brief history about Farrell's Ice Cream Parlor. Uh, it was founded in Portland, Oregon, 1963, and then expanded to uh, California, Hawaii, all over the country, uh, all over the United States, that is. And uh, I'll tell you, the, the, the only locations I remember in Chicago was well, I mentioned before at Ford City Shopping Center on the southwest side of Chicago. It was also in North Riverside Mall, North Riverside, and also at Woodfield Mall in Schaumburg. And uh, it started. Uh, it was became well known when you when the kids had a birthday party, they would get they would get a free ice cream sundae. And the setting of the restaurant was like uh, it had. Uh, a theme with early 1900s and the employees were wearing dresses and straw boater hats and they feature a player piano. It looked like an old fashioned, you know, like from the silent movies. Uh, I do. I went there once at Fort city. I went to a birthday party. Um, it was a fun place. Uh, you know, the food was good. They also had a menu, not just ice cream. They had sandwiches, you know, hamburgers, hot dogs, but, the, but their specialty was, uh, you know, ice cream sodas. And, uh, you know, uh, Sundays, banana splits, and all that. So I have a menu, and I'll go very quickly on this. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so they get uh, hamburgers, uh, uh, hot dogs. Uh, they also had... Uh, Hot Fudge Sundays. Uh, also, they had a section um, called Belly Busters. And uh, the, the interesting uh, things they had on Belly Busters, they had uh, five things. It was uh, the Gibson Girl, the Monarchia, Feral Zoo, Madame Pele's Volcano, Tapanat, and, of course, the Pig's Trough. And that is the biggest one. That they make they top you had so much ice cream and toppings and hot fudge and it was like a trough like a horse would eat, and if you and if you ate that, uh, if you ate one by yourself, uh, you they won't charge you for it, and that's interesting. And uh, or if you had a friend that you both join in and you can eat the whole thing, this one was huge. It was huge, you know. It was like a big platter of ice cream and all that. I could have done that when I was a kid to eat it, but now I just can't. You know, it's uh, not at my age. <laughs> that would be. I love ice cream, but not that much. Anyway, so Farrell stayed in business. Uh, it left the Chicago area in the early 1980s, and then, it, but it stayed in California, in Portland for many years, and in Hawaii. Okay, and then, uh, then uh, it the last one closed was in uh, Hawaii, and uh, no, actually, I'm sorry, it was not uh, Hawaii. It was in um, California. It was in Brea, California. That was the last one. It was about uh, about two years ago. So uh, there was discussion about bringing it back, but uh, that didn't happen. So hopefully you never know. You never know because people still remember that. They loved the ice cream. They loved the atmosphere of the restaurant, you know. And uh, so uh, 
you know, an interesting uh, thing about uh, about the uh, ice cream parlor. There was on the Bob Newhart show uh, that starred Bob Newhart in the seventies. Um, the the characters went to a um, a place that looked like Farrell's, and it looked similar. It's kind of eerie. I remember watching the show, and the employee that played was John Ritter from Three's Company, and he wore the uh, the old fashioned uh, costume, you know, with the straw hat and uh, the striped outfit, you know. And uh, he was, uh, I think, I remember he was kind of obnoxious. So, you know, way to go, John. Okay. So that'll be all for today about the Shock Theater and Ice Cream Parlor. Uh, please follow me uh, uh, and subscribe to my podcast, Vanishing Island Stories. Uh, I will upload this on my social media accounts, and you can also listen on YouTube, on my YouTube channel called Vanishing Island Stories. Also, uh, I want to men- one last mention that uh, September is Bozo Circus Month on Van Chicagoland. I will uh, do some special things for that. Uh, I will do. Uh, I will create a video. I will write a story on my blog uh, and also do a podcast, and they'll all be on Van- on my blog, Van Chicagoland uh, Van Chicagoland sto- uh, Stories blog. You can find me there. Okay. And uh, so thank you for joining me. This is episode 40, season two. I'm your host, Pete Costanis. And uh, hopefully I will do the next episode this, this coming weekend. Uh, be be a, a nice treat for everybody. So bye-bye for, for now for me. And now here's bye-bye for now from Ray Rayner. And take it away, Ray. We have to go. Bye-bye-bye. <laughs>